Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are going to be looking at adding fractions that are either tenths or hundredths. We are dealing with unlike denominators here. We are in our home links, Unit 5, Lesson 5. Now let's take a look at the first problem. It says 2 tenths plus 15 hundredths. In, use, uh, write the equation in words, okay? Well, for our purposes for number one, I'm going to change up the words a little bit. Instead of the word tenths, I'm going to use the word dimes. And instead of the word hundredths, I'm going to use the word pennies. I bet you knew where that was coming. So dimes and pennies. Okay. So if I have two dimes and 15 pennies, what would that equation look like? Well, here's two dimes plus 15 pennies. equals what? Okay. Well, the problem with this is that we are adding two different amounts of money. Now, most of you have probably already done the calculation in your head and came up with the total of 35 cents. 35 cents. Now, what does that mean? Well, pennies are cents, and they are hundredths of a dollar. So one penny is worth one hundredth of a dollar. Okay. So when I have dimes, uh, they are equivalent of ten pennies, okay? And a dime is a tenth of a dollar, okay? So in order to make this easier, I need to convert two dimes into pennies. Well, if one dime is worth ten pennies, two dimes would be the same as twenty pennies. So let's look at my equation. If I had twenty pennies plus fifteen pennies... 20 plus 15 would give me a total of 35 pennies. Okay. So now let's convert that into fractions. Even though cents are a fraction of a dollar, let's use the mathematical fractions, tenths and hundredths. So I changed dimes into pennies. So what I really did was I changed pennies into Ten, uh, hundredths, almost a tenths. And we knew that the 15 pennies was hundredths. And so now we just have to change our answer unit into hundredths. So instead of 35 pennies total, we're dealing with hundredths. <laughs> Don't forget those THs. Okay? So that's if I had to add two amounts that were in word form. Let's look at these numbers, okay? And again, interchanging tenths and hundredths are probably the easiest way for us to kind of pivot between unlike denominators because. 100 is just 10 groups of 10, okay? So every time I'm confronted with a tenth compared to a hundredth, I just need to convert the tenths into hundredths by multiplying the top and bottom numbers of my fraction by 10. Let me give you an example. So again, number 3 has 1 tenth and 50 hundredths, or 1 dime and 50 pennies. Now again, if I know that one dime is the equivalent of 10 pennies, then one tenth is the equivalent of 10 hundredths. So now all I'm doing is adding 10 hundredths plus 50 hundredths. And of course, 10 plus 50 is going to give me a total of 60. So 10 hundredths plus 50 hundredths equals 60 hundredths. Now, it gets a little bit more complicated when there's more fractions involved or mixed numbers. But still, it's just a matter of thinking about 
what are the fractions telling us? How many parts are there? So like for example, problem number six, I'm adding three and 22 hundredths plus two and eight tenths. Now, these are both mixed numbers, but each of these mixed numbers have fractions of unlike denominators. So all I have to do is change the denominator from tenths to hundredths by multiplying both the top and bottom numbers by 10. And by adding a zero to any number, I've essentially multiplied it by 10. That's what you do when you add a zero. You're pushing everything over one place value to the left, okay? So now I'm adding three and 22 hundredths plus two and 80 hundredths together. Now, for the sake of space, they wrote everything sideways, so you wanna write a number sentence to fill in the equation. But for actual computation purposes, it's better to do it uh, vertically. So three and 22 hundredths plus two and 80 hundredths. So now I start with my fractional parts, okay? And I'm only gonna be thinking about the top numbers, okay? The 22 plus 80, okay? So what is 22 plus 80? Well, two plus zero is two, two plus eight is 10. That gives me 102 hundredths. Then I add three plus two, that gives me five. So my answer is five and 102 hundredths. That is an uncomfortable number. We have both a improper fraction being uh, fit into a mixed number, and, and that doesn't work. So we have to take this uh, uncomfortable improper fraction and do something with it. So what's another way for us to think about 102 hundredths? If I had 102 pennies, how much would that be? Well, if I have 100 pennies, that's a dollar. So if I have 102 pennies, that would be $1 and two pennies left over, or $1 and two hundredths. So what I have now is an addition problem. What is five plus one and two hundredths? Well, that would give me six. Six and two hundredths. So all that work that I did here to get me to this point right here. So three and 22 hundredths plus two and 80 hundredths is gonna give me a total of five and 102 hundredths, which is no, no, which is actually worth six and two hundredths, okay? Easy peasy, right? Well, maybe not. Maybe you've got some questions and you're not sure how to do this or this is confusing. Well, you need to talk to your math teacher about that, okay? If my uh, video isn't still filling in all the missing parts, you need to talk to somebody. We can only help you when we know you need help. Now lastly, let's take a look at this exercise down here in the practice. This is write three equivalent fractions. Well, if you can skip count you can write equivalent fractions because when I am skip counting, I can increase the numerators and the denominators to create some uh, equivalent fractions. For example, okay, one half. So I have a one on the top and a two on the bottom. So if I could skip count by ones, which is counting by ones, one, two, three, four. And if I can skip count by twos, two, four, six, eight, I can come up with equivalent fractions very easily. All I'm doing is I'm increasing the top number uh, by one, and I'm increasing the bottom number by two. Now when I look at one fourth below, I would take the same approach, except this time I'm gonna skip count by ones, or count by ones, one, two, three, four. But then on the bottom I'm gonna skip count by fours, four, eight, 12, 16. Four sixteenths, how do we know that that's equivalent to one fourth? Well, if I were to create a box, like so, and if I were to cut it, like I did right here, into fourths, and I shade it in one fourth, right? 
like so. And then if I were to take that box and I were to cut it again into uh, each box into four parts, like so. One, two, one, two. That would give me a total of 16 boxes. And notice how the shaded parts did not change. All that happened is that the shaded parts got split into smaller individual parts. Okay, So my one-fourth became four-sixteenths by virtue of cutting each fourth into four smaller parts. Okay, And that's all you're doing here. But if you can skip count, then you can create equivalent fractions. Okay? All right, that's it for now, friends. Until next time, have a good day, good luck, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks.